Joining us now is Benham Ben Talablu. He's a senior fellow at the Foundation for the Defense of Democracies. Thank you for being here, Benham. Uh, I wonder, first of all, how you think Israel will and perhaps more importantly should react to this. It's a pleasure to be with you. Thanks for having me. It's an excellent question because this is historic. Historic in several ways. Obviously, it's the first time the Islamic Republic of Iran directly launched projectiles from its own territory against Israel. It's also historic because it's the first time the regime chose to strike a defended target. As you know, Israel has the best or one of the best layered air and missile defense architectures in the world. But the third and perhaps most important reason it's historic, it's the first time the Israelis have literally taken on a state-to-state -state threat in this face-to-face -face fashion since the 1973 war. Uh, so it's about five decades uh, since they've had to face a state-to-state -state projectile threat directly faced against them. And the Islamic Republic of Iran here, regardless of some of these missiles and projectiles being intercepted or not, tried to break a new uh, norm, you could say, or wanted to establish a new rule that it could strike directly at the Jewish state without having to pay a price. So if there is no kinetic retaliation by the Israelis here, the Islamic Republic will get off scot-free, and you can expect more, not less, of these attacks. So you're saying that Israel should respond militarily? There should certainly be a military component, and there should be a broad diplomatic component as well. Make no mistake. Israel right now has the ability diplomatically, not just through the U.N. Security Council, but with a whole host of countries like the U.K., like France, uh, like Jordan, right next door, where things have been rocky since uh, the Israeli military response after the October 7 terrorist attack, which the Islamic Republic was backing, by the way, uh, to reset the chessboard against the Islamic Republic, to call for, first and foremost, maximum pressure on the government of the Islamic Republic, as well as maximum support to one of the longest suffering victims of the Islamic Republic, which is the Iranian people. I, I was reading President Biden's statement, Benham. Uh, it seemed to me, without saying it directly, that he was kind of saying, hey, Israel, this is a win. You got this win because 99 percent of those projectiles were taken down. Most of them didn't even get to Israeli territory or over Israeli territory. Uh, take it as a win. Maybe we should call it even here. Is that a fair reading of the president's statement? Uh, and if so, is that the right tone from the White House? I think that's the tone the White House has been communicating. In fact, there's even been an Axios story uh, thus far hinting exactly at what you just said. Uh, in my view, that's born of a faulty philosophy. It's born out of an over-reliance in deterrence by denial rather than deterrence by punishment. And here's what I mean. We've largely but not exclusively been trying to block or impede or shoot down Iran-backed Houthi threats from Yemen to international shipping. We've largely been trying to block or shoot down in the past some of these Iran-backed Shia militia threats against U.S. bases in 2023 and 2024 uh, from Iraq and Syria against U.S. positions in Iraq and Syria, just relying on costly defenses. Remember, air and missile defenses are exceptionally expensive. And until the adversary knows that they will threaten to lose more than just the projectile they fired, they will not stop with these kinds of operations. There is a direct line from failing to respond to previous Iranian missile and, and drone uh, and even rocket activity in the past that led to this. For example, the U.S. has still not responded militarily to the first time ever the Iranians killed a U.S. citizen with a ballistic missile, which actually occurred in September 2022. Mm. Now, it, Iran, just in the last uh, hour or so, its military commanders have said that if Israel does try to re retaliate, then Israel will face an even larger attack uh, than the one we have just seen. And it also, that commander also said that if the U.S. helps or backs Israel in any retaliation, then the U.S. or U.S. interests, bases, etc., in the Middle East could be targeted too. So, how should Israel and the U.S. react to that? Just ignore what Iran is saying and go ahead with what they, in particular Israel, thinks is the best path? 
Well, this is actually part of the Iranian strategy here. Lest we forget, the Islamic Republic often uses military means to achieve political ends. And even though its attack on the Jewish state brought America and Israel closer together than they ever were in the past few months, particularly since October 7, the Islamic Republic struck Israel against the backdrop of six months of the uh, Israeli war against Gaza, where Iran is hoping to continue to inflame tensions and grow the distance between America and Israel. And so right now, the Islamic Republic is trying to put distance between Joe Biden and uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu. And that's precisely why they're dangling the sword of Damocles over U.S. bases in the region to paint the target on these forces and say, aha, if America struck, it is because of Israel. So they're trying to get their political ground game to keep American allies and partners apart from one another and from the U.S. itself. We simply cannot let mm. the world's foremost state sponsor of terrorism exercise that political veto and normalize the striking of the Jewish state. Benham, we've just been looking or are still looking at some pictures uh, from the streets of Tehran, uh, Iranians out waving uh, the flag of Iran, etc. Um, obviously, the, those kind of demonstrations we've seen before, organized very much by the leaders of the Islamic Republic, rounding up a few hundred uh, to make it look like a huge demonstration in support of them. Uh, but what of the theory that this was an attack that was telegraphed. Uh, it was an attack in which Iran said, we're sending drones. Uh, they'll take a few hours to get there, knowing that Israel has one of the best air defense systems in the world, knowing that Israel would shoot down uh, most, if not all, of those drones and missiles. And Iran really just wanted to say to its people, hey, here we are. We, we just launched 300 projectiles at Israel. Look what we're doing. But they didn't really want to invite a larger conflict. What of that theory? Well, sir. Well, certainly the government of the Islamic Republic doesn't want to invite a larger war, but the government of the Islamic Republic thrives in a state of conflict. They know they cannot win against the Israelis in a conventional military conflict, nor can they scroll all the way up and win an escalation cycle. And what they're trying to do is inflame tensions, land blows, use military means to achieve political ends, and make it look like they've done something. I do not think the regime in this sense uh, was just striking at Israel to save face. This is a historic, precedent-shaking strike in the history of the Islamic Republic's mm. missile and drone program. They have never struck a defended target before. They have never done uh, territory to territory strikes with these kinds of weapons before. So this, in my view, was about testing the defenses of Israel, seeing if America would come to Israel's aid. This was really the ground game for, I think, a much larger kind of shift in the Islamic Republic security doctrine than just trying to save face. And with respect to the quote-unquote demonstrations you mentioned in Iran, uh, if the government of the Islamic Republic even cared about uh, the, the wants, views, values, and wishes of the Iranian people, they would have noted that since 2009, you've had Iranians of all stripes protesting, saying, not Gaza, not Lebanon, my life only for Iran. Fundamentally, you couldn't have a bigger gap in the Middle East today than the state and the street in Iran. And you see that in boom and bust cycles of protests, particularly those that uh, were touched off after the killing of a 22-year-old Iranian woman named Massa Amini last year, leading to protests in over 150 different cities and towns and even villages. So these protests very much are the current ones, I should say. These demonstrations are state-sponsored to try to keep the lid on that society, which has been pushing up against that state for quite some time now. And so this mm. strike was trying to kind of signal resolve to audiences at home and abroad. The Israelis, very obviously, Benham, have a very long list of targets they can uh, hit in Iran, if they so choose to do so. Uh, the U.S. knows very well what those targets will be, uh, and they would range, obviously, from uh, weapons depots to nuclear facilities to uh, the headquarters of the Islamic Republic leadership. Um, do, does Israel go after any of those high-profile targets if it does decide on military retaliation, do you believe, or do they keep it at a lower level? 
And speaking of a lower level or perhaps a more consistent level, uh, Israel has been or reportedly been uh, quite good at cyber attacks against the Islamic Republic, supporting local acts of sabotage against the Islamic Republic. Uh, they've been able to engage in uh, lower scale, scale drone strikes uh, against uh, military facilities of the Islamic Republic, such as uh, missile depots and even drone factories and even drone storage facilities in the past. So that could be married up. You could likely see a several style counterpunch, a cyber campaign, a sabotage campaign, potentially even aerial strikes if the U.S. green lights it and works with the Israelis uh, against limited revolutionary guard corps facilities that authorize the strike. Uh, conversely, you could have a simple or more limited uh, deterrence by punishment strategy against the regime's oil facilities, which continue to be the lifeblood, the illicit mm -hmm. lifeblood, one should say, to generate revenue to pay for all of these unmanned aerial threats be they drones, cruise missiles, or ballistic missiles. There are a lot of options here. I don't think the Israelis yeah. could solve anything militarily. It's a question about managing the optics, and the X factor really is, what will Washington do? Ben and Ben Talablu, it is fascinating to talk to you as always, sir. We thank you for being here, and we will be back to you later for more on our coverage of thank what you. Benham just said is an unprecedented situation in the Middle East. Iran strikes.